We are talking Detroit Lions injury news, and there is a lot to talk about in this video. Amon Ross A. Brown, DeAndre Swift, Jerry Jacobs, and Jamison Williams. Also, we're going to throw in, is this a must-win game and why? But before we get into today's video, if you think it's a smart and sound idea to take Icy Hot and rub it all over your genitals on purpose, unlike Craig Reynolds who did it accidentally, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because we tuck all things Detroit Lions news and rumors. And sometimes being a Lions fan, you can feel the heat. Also, take that like button with you, rub Icy Hot on it, and let that bad boy feel the fire. Let's get into today's Lions news. We got some major injury news here, and it's going to start with Amon Ross St. Brown. Dan Campbell, our head coach, came out and said he will not be playing in this game. Well, what does that mean for the Detroit Lions? It means quite a bit. Why? Because Amon Ross St. Brown is our number one target for Jared Goff getting those big yards. He's having a phenomenal season so far. He had a great second half of the season last year, and he's helping us make our offense be one of the best in the NFL. So what can the Lions do regarding not having him on the field? Multiple things. First off, Quintus Cephas can be utilized, and before he got injured last year, he was having a great season. Jared Goff loved throwing him the football, and I suspect in this game they're going to do the same. Quintus Cephas steps up in place of Amon Ross St. Brown, and our offense continues. Also, a guy who needs to get involved and I think should be involved with a little scheming against Seattle, that is TJ Hawkinson, our all-great tight end. Get him involved. He hasn't really been this year. And with Amon Ross St. Brown, you can go ahead and exploit some mismatches and matchup nightmare for Seattle. Look. He's the eighth overall pick. He needs to step up. Ben Johnson can get him involved and make some big plays in this game. And there is holes to be had with Seattle defense. Getting in the middle is exactly what the Lions need to do. I think the offense will continue to thrive even with Amon Ross St. Brown out. I know a lot of people think this, the, the game may be over because he's out. I don't believe that is the case at all. So, Smash that like button. I'm going against Seattle Seahawks Tyler, and you're going to see a video being uploaded, whether it be later today or tomorrow. Me and him talk about this game, and we are in a competition with likes. Let's get to 300 likes. I think we can beat out the Seattle Seahawks fans. Smash that like button. Let's get it done. Another major injury update here is DeAndre Swift. Again, Dan Campbell came out and said DeAndre Swift is not playing in this game. And guess what? I don't think that is a big surprise for sure regarding our Detroit Lions. I think a lot of us expected that he would not be playing. What can the Lions do regarding DeAndre Swift? Well, do exactly what we have been doing. Still run the football. Why is that? Because the Detroit Lions are number three running the football. I think they can continue to be very good in that and we have a guy named Jamal Williams. We have a guy named Craig Reynolds. We have a guy named Justin Jackson. That needs to be involved in this game, and I think they will be involved. Look, the Lions offensive line is built to run the football regardless of what running back is in there. We have a great run offensive line. We have a great run offense in period, and Seattle Seahawks have the 31st ranked run defense, so... This is why you build depth. This is why Brad Holmes got the players we got. I think Justin Jackson should be used like DeAndre Swift for that big dynamic speed. He's the breakout player that can do that. And I think Craig Reynolds should be the guy who should be getting the f given the football for a change of pace back. Because obviously Jamal Williams is probably going to be getting the workload. And he was getting over four yards a carry anyways. Craig Reynolds over seven yards a carry. Justin Jackson will probably get yards here. So, yes, it sucks that we don't have our best player, but it's not the end of the world, folks. It really is not. This offense is built for injuries for wide receivers and running backs. Injuries happen in the NFL, and you're going to lose your stars. That just happens in this league, and you got to count on the players behind them to step up. You have to count on Jamal. You have to count on 
Craig Reynolds. You got to count on Justin Jackson for wide receivers. You got to count on, you know, Josh Reynolds. You got to count on DJ Chark and the rest of the guys. This is just what happens, folks, and it is what it is. The Lions offense is still good. You still got Jared Goff, who has done a good job distributing the football, and Ben Johnson is still your offensive coordinator. If you can't go, if you can't build an offense against a bad defense, and you can't score on a bad defense without two players, then this team's in a world of hurt anyways. Then you don't deserve to win football games because good teams figure ways to win regardless who is the players in the lineup. Yes, offense takes step backs, but you still got to be able to produce. So the Lions should be able to produce. Who's going to win this game? Let me know in the comment section. Type L for Lions, S for Seahawks. That is simple. I want to see you guys think. I'm sure Seattle Seahawks fan going to see this video. So if you're a Lions fan, show your pride. But if you're a Lions fan you think Seattle wins, hey, no problem with that. Put it in the comment section. I'm curious to see what you guys think. There is some also good news on the injury front, and that is Jamison Williams is getting ready to make his debut. He's starting to be able to get in the practice, and guess what? After the bye week, he should be playing, and that is awesome news for the Detroit Lions. I think that's why it's really important these next two games without him to get a win in Seattle, to go to New England and get a win, because if you're 3-2 and two at the bye week, you're coming back with your greatest threat on offense. Jamison Williams, the guy that is going to burn defense. Now, imagine Amon Ross St. Brown, DeAndre Swift coming back with Jamison Williams. This offense is already explosive. It's going to take it to the next level. That deep threat that we've been waiting for for play action will be here. And I am so excited to see what Jamison Williams can do for this offense for the Detroit Lions. I just, I have no idea the heights that this offense can go to with that. We've seen Jared Goff throw deep passes to DJ Chark, who either it was dropped or is a little overthrown. First off, Jameson Williams got fantastic hands. He's not going to be dropping those balls. And secondly, you can't overthrow the speed of Jameson Williams. Deep passes and big plays are going to happen. He is our Tariq Hill on offense. And if you watch what the Dolphins do with him, good luck. He just burns teams. And I cannot wait to see Amon Ross St. Brown being more open than he is because he's going to get the ability to be more open. So Jamison Williams, Amon Ross, St. Brown are two young offensive wide receivers. Their numbers are going to do well. Now, when Williams comes here, he's probably going to get on a specific amount of uh, reps. He's not going to come in and, and probably be every down. That's not what's going to happen because, first off, he's a rookie. Secondly, he is coming off an injury, but that's okay. He's going to slowly get worked into this offense, and that's all we need is maybe he gets 10 snaps in a game. Guess what? <laughs> those 10 snaps, those deep routes, it's going to be really nice to see how defenses attempt to cover this guy. It's going to be glorious. I cannot wait. Super excited. You know, I've never been really excited for a bye week like I have this year just because – We'll get to see after this bye week all our players coming back, and it's going to be amazing to watch. Absolutely amazing. But he's not the only player coming back from injury after the bye week, folks. Jerry Jacobs, our corner, will be back as well. He's, he's starting to practice. We love Jerry Jacobs over here. We've had issues in our secondary, and I think he's going to alleviate some of that issues. Him and Jeffrey Okuda. It's going to be much improved defensively regarding the secondary because Amani Awarie has taken a step back. You know, we've had injuries to Tracy Walker, so it's good to get one of our staples back on defense, and it's just going to make our team better because he is a damn good cornerback. Super excited to see him on the field, and I am so effing happy he's ready to come back. If we could get the next two wins, just imagine this team in a healthier position with Swift, Amon Ra, Jerry, Williams. Oh, my God, it's going to be glorious. Right now, folks, the Lions are favored to win by four and a half.
I think they'll do better than that. I have a score of Lions winning 34-27. to So go to chatsports.com slash Lions bet. Bet on the Lions to win. Put in the promo code Lions125. Get a 125% deposit bonus. Because the Lions, I think, are going to win this game and do better than 4.5. And, and yes, this is a must-win game, folks. Why is this a must-win game? Because if you can't beat a Seattle Seahawks team who is regarded as one of the worst teams in the NFL, who's bad on pass defense, who's awful on run defense, and is not that great offensively at home, your third home game, then you have no reason to be beating other teams. You, the Lions should be 2-2 two and two after Sunday. Got to win this game. Have to. Get back to 500. 2-2. Two and two, you have a chance to continue to compete in the NFL. You're considered, you know, a decent team. You even have the the chance to make a wild card. At 1-3, and three, the odds significantly fall. Regarding wild card, you become a team considered to be a top five draft pick at that point. Because then you have to face the New England Patriots, the Dallas Cowboys, the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, twice against the Green Bay Packers. If you can't beat Seattle, how are you going to beat these other teams? How are you going to convince the fan base that you're a competent team when you can't win at home against a bad football team who's traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast at a 1 p.m. game? It's going to be difficult. So for for everybody, to me, this is a must-win game. Again, I've got a video dropping. I don't know when I'm going to drop it. It's going to be Lions, Chat Sports, me versus Seattle Seahawks, Chat Sports, Tyler. It's going to be a good video. We're breaking all down. Get ready for that, whether it be today or tomorrow. With that said, folks, adios. <laughs>